Hi everyone, and welcome to week 44. This week, I'm going to start the first in a series of episodes which will be focusing on each synthesizer device that's available in Reason. Now, anyone who's been using Reason since version 1 is probably pretty familiar with all the synth devices that are included and what types of sounds you might be able to produce using them. But for those users who are just starting out and new to Reason, it can be a little bit confusing to see this big list of synthesizers and try to figure out exactly which one might be the best for the job when selecting or creating a sound. This week, I'm going to focus on the Subtractor Synthesizer. As the only synth that was included in the rack when Reason was first introduced in 2000, the Subtractor is a classic synth in its own right. The name Subtractor comes from the type of synthesis method that it uses to create sounds, namely, subtractive synthesis. Subtractive synthesis is the method of synthesis used by many of the classic and popular vintage synths that have come back into fashion in music lately. But what is subtractive synthesis? Basically, it is a method of creating a sound by removing or subtracting some of the harmonics mainly by the use of audio filters. As an example, let's start with an initialized subtractor patch using this sawtooth waveform. Without any filtering applied, it is quite rich and full of harmonics. When we apply a filter, in this case a low-pass filter, to the sound and tweak the cutoff, we start to change its color or sound. Now we're going to get into more on filters and other parameters in next week's episode. But to fully understand how the sound will be affected and how we can achieve a desired sound in the end, we need to know a few things. First off, what is generating the sound? What is the source? In all synths, you will always start with the oscillator section to choose the source or base of a sound. The subtractor has two oscillators with 32 different waveform types to choose from. Plus a noise generator with variable color, decay or length, and level. But that's not all. It also has a phase offset modulation function, which gives you the ability to create entirely new waveforms using either subtraction or multiplication modes and a knob to adjust the amount of phase offset. Try out the different waveforms to see which one suits your needs for the basis of the sound. In general, simple waveforms like sawtooth or square are best for thick and full analog type sounds. Sine and triangle are good for softer timbre and sub bass sounds. And the additional waveforms can be useful for creating many types of timbres and textures. These settings here allow you to set the octave, or how high or low the bass pitch will be, and also raise or lower the frequency by either semitones and cents, or one hundredth of a semitone. Now normally you will want to play a sound on a keyboard and have the pitch change as you play different keys, and that is what this keyboard track is for. With this button off, the oscillator will not change pitch when you play different keys, but will remain at the frequency you had set using the octaves, semi, and cent parameters, and this is very useful for special effects and percussion type sounds. Note that when you start with an initialized patch, oscillator 1 is active, but oscillator 2 is not. But you can turn it on right here. There are a few other parameters that we can use to further shape the sound source. The mix knob allows us to adjust the blend between oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. Dead center is an equal blend. If you turn the knob fully to the left, you will only hear oscillator 1. And to the right, you will only hear oscillator 2. 
The FM knob gives us the ability to use frequency modulation, or FM for short, to create a whole new texture and timbre. Now basically, FM is when the frequency or pitch of one oscillator, called the carrier, is modulated or changed or transformed by the frequency of another oscillator. In order to hear any FM effect, you need to have both oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 active. In the subtractor, oscillator 1 is always the carrier and oscillator 2 is always the modulator. The FM knob adjusts how much the modulator will affect the carrier, so a setting to the left will be very subtle while a setting to the right will be much more pronounced. The pitch and waveform type of the two oscillators will change the resultant sound quite a bit. When using FM, remember that since oscillator 1 is the carrier, you will want to adjust the mix knob so that you're only hearing oscillator 1. FM is useful for creating anything from rich harmonic tones to complex and harmonic effects. You can also choose to use the noise generator instead of a waveform as the modulator source, since it is internally routed to the oscillator 2 output. To do this, just deactivate oscillator 2 here. The last parameter we can use to sculpt the sound source is ring modulation. Basically, this multiplies two audio signals together and the output contains added frequencies generated by the sum of and the difference between the two audio signals. In the subtractor, oscillator 1 is multiplied with oscillator 2 to produce these frequencies. Ring mod is great for creating complex effects and enharmonic bell-like tones. Next week, we're going to continue with the subtractor and cover how to take these raw timbers that we've explored and sculpt them further using filters, envelopes, and modulators, including low-frequency oscillators, to create exactly the type of sound that we're looking for. Well, that's it for another week. Again, I'm James Bernard from Propellerhead Software, and I'll see you all next week with another tip.